Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. We have an expert with 41 years of experience, someone who's written over 400 papers, who's probably the second most published person in the area of EMP. His name is Bill Radowski. He is uh, University of California at Santa Barbara, PhD, in this area. He began his career at the Air Force Weapons Lab in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He is an EMP fellow and an IEEE fellow or IEEE fellow. He is the chairman of TC-5 High Power EM for the IEEE Society. He is also the founder and president of Meditech in Goleta, California that began in 1984. He is world renowned for his expertise in electromagnetic pulse and the security therein and the concerns therein. Please welcome Bill Rodowski to its rainmaking time. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you're welcome. I'm looking forward to it. Why are you in this business? What are you doing? 400 papers in 41 years. You're tracking something, and I think you have a tiger by the tail. What's going on? Well, at, uh, during the Cold War, um, uh, unfortunately, we had a situation where the United States and the Soviet Union were were pointing a lot of nuclear weapons at each other, and one of the really important aspects of defending against a surprise nuclear attack uh, is to protect our systems against high altitude EMP. So an awful lot of work was done early on to protect important military systems from this threat. But and yeah, and over the years this has developed more to now concern against uh, terrorist attacks and defending our country and our infrastructure from uh, these threats. What do you do at Meditech? Well, we're a research uh, corporation, uh, so we work with our customers, which are either the government or uh, commercial companies, who are looking for uh, methods to protect themselves against both the high altitude EMP, which uh, is a, a very low probability threat, and but more commonly today, uh, we're looking at protecting against uh, criminals and terrorists uh, who use electromagnetic weapons to uh, damage computers or to breach uh, security systems. I just spoke with your colleague. We just did a show before this one, and he was sharing about geomagnetic storms being on the table of concern for EMP bursts. But your area is more in the EMP concern related to terrorist attacks and the misuse of this. Yes, that's correct. Although, um, as uh, as uh, my colleague was mentioning previously, there is a close relationship between part of the electromagnetic signal signal that comes from a high altitude burst and a geomagnetic storm. And the reason that's important is the protection techniques for both of those uh, are the same. Explain that. Well, the um, the way it works with uh, electromagnetic signals is depending on the frequency of the signal, it affects different uh, types of infrastructures and different types of cables and wiring. Basically, the highest frequencies uh, work more like a radio and affect small objects, uh, create signals uh, in the radios, but the very low frequency uh, radiation, electromagnetic radiation, creates problems for very long wired cabled systems like the power system and therefore, uh, that aspect uh, is, is the same for both the geomagnetic storm and the low-frequency part of the high-altitude EMP. Are you well-received in what you're doing? Well, I, I think by my colleagues I am, but uh, one of the problems with working in an area uh, that we hope uh, we will never have to deal with, uh, the, the use of nuclear weapons or electromagnetic weapons, it's... Uh, it's something people don't like to think about, so sometimes people uh, don't receive the subject very well. But we try to be understanding uh, when I'm asked to give a presentation at a conference uh, to make sure people understand that we're doing this to protect against the effects so they may not happen. What is the IEEE Society? It's the International uh, Electrical and Electronics Engineers. It's a worldwide society that started in the United States, but now 
has spread throughout the world, and it has, I think, 38 or 39 subgroups. They're, they're actually called societies. Electromagnetic Compatibility, EMC Society, is one of those, and I'm active in that area. Another power energy society, PES, I'm also active in, and a third one, Antennas and Propagation. They all uh, have in common uh, interest in electromagnetics. So that's why I belong to those three societies. Do they get it? Do they get it, well, what you in, know? In the EMC society, we receive uh, papers every year uh, and uh, to be published and also uh, papers at conferences dealing with these problems. So it's, uh, and, and many of these papers come from all over the world. Uh, today, we find uh, uh, Russian scientists, Chinese scientists, uh, those from Germany, uh, England, Sweden, uh, in addition to the United States, publishing many papers. On your site, it talks about applied power solutions, division and geomagnetic storm forecasting, transient test capability, intentional EMI. You have also something called EE Seal, EMI, and transient suppressors. So, do power companies buy devices from you, or how does this work? Uh, in the past, uh, we did make the EE Seal product. It's now uh, we spun that off, and it's a separate uh, corporation which we uh, cooperate with. It's the Quell Corporation, Q U E L L. They're in uh, Albuquerque, but they, we started the business, and we later spun them off. Uh, but they are very active in selling protection to customers uh, on cables and wiring. These are filters that are put in to the connectors to remove the noise um, and the impulses that come from different threats, not just EMP, but the day-to-day -day noise and so forth. Uh, the uh, Applied Power Solutions Division, uh, we, we have suspended work in that area, uh, unfortunately, because uh, anything dealing with space weather seems to be uh, 11 11-year cycle problem. Uh, people are interested when they when the big storms are occurring, but they're not in between. So it's difficult to uh, uh, organize a business on that basis. But we're still interested. We still uh, do research in that area. Is there any type of devices or products people can have at their homes? I guess if the grid goes down, it doesn't really matter what they have. If well, you can have a, an uninterruptible power source, a UPS, a lot of people have those anyway uh, in areas where their power may go out periodically, but that will only help you for you know, a few hours uh, typically. Uh, some people who live in rural areas who maybe have unreliable power, uh, they will have a, a generator with some fuel to keep themselves going so that they don't lose their uh, uh, freezer, for instance. Will walkie-talkies work after an EMP? Uh, most likely they will, um, depending on their frequency uh, that they're being used. Um, I, I would say uh, the higher the frequency of operation, uh, the less likely you'll have a problem. Uh, the high altitude EMP tends to uh, be at frequencies uh, below several hundred megahertz, which is the, um, the band for uh, FM radio. So uh, once you are... Uh, below those frequencies, uh, uh, you're more susceptible uh, uh, to EMP. So uh, AM radios and so forth may have some difficulty. But uh, in, in general, small devices like a cellular phone and so forth should not have a problem. Of course, the cellular network may not be operating afterwards uh, because of the large towers and the computers that operate them. And what about ham radio? Uh, ham radio is probably has the biggest problem because uh, at least those that are operating in the HF band because that's the heart of the EMP band. So those folks uh, should be looking at, uh, in addition to surge arresters for lightning, they should be looking at some protection for EMP, which means a different type uh, 